Some of you have responded in a previous Basics video to the fact that when you plug in your Nexus 7 into your computer to transfer files, the device doesn't act like a hard drive. Instead, it acts like a camera, and you can only get access to the picture stored on your device. So here is a solution to your problems. When your Nexus 7 is plugged into a computer, swipe the notifications tray down, and it will tell you that your Nexus 7 is connected as a camera. Press on this message to take you to a screen where you can change the options. The two options you have are PTP, which is Picture Transfer Protocol, which will be your current setting, and Media Transfer Protocol. Switch to MTP and you will open up your entire Nexus 7 directory structure to the computer so you can put on anything you like onto the tablet and take anything off. Just remember that there are important system files on the Nexus 7 that you shouldn't mess around with, so create your own folders to put files into. The lock screen on Android tablets continues to evolve, and these days you can even personalise them with a message like this one that you can see displayed on my Nexus 7. I'll tell you what though, this feature is definitely hidden away and difficult to find, so I'll make it easy for you and show you where to do it. Go to the settings screen and then choose security. From there, at the top of the security settings is an option called owner info. Press on it and you'll be taken to the following screen where you can type in your message. There's also an option to toggle whether the message appears on your lock screen or not. You can type in whatever message you like and you can make it a pretty long message as well. If it is long, it will simply scroll along the lock screen like this. Thanks for watching and why don't you give me one of these thumbs up? Go on, you know you want to. I'm sure you all know this by now, but if you're in a web browser, you can double tap on the screen to zoom into text to read an article. But did you know that you can zoom into any screen you like with a triple tap? Here's how to do it. The first thing you will need to do is to go to the settings screen, and from there you want to scroll down to the bottom of the screen to access the accessibility options screen. Now on this screen is an option called magnification gestures. Press that and then on the following screen you can toggle a setting on or off. Now, when you're on any screen, whether it be the home screen or applications, simply triple tap the screen to zoom in. Once you're zoomed in, you can use two fingers to scroll around the screen and zoom in and out. One thing to note when you use the zoom function is that the whole tablet will be surrounded by a blue border to indicate that you are zoomed in. To come out of zoom mode, simply triple tap on the screen again. And if you triple tap and hold your finger on the screen, you can then navigate around the screen with a single finger. But as soon as you let go, the screen will zoom out again. This is another very simple way to get access to application information where you can disable notifications, clear defaults and so on. On the home screen, swipe down the notification list from the top of the screen. On any of the applications that currently display notifications, you can long press on it and a small app info option will appear. Press on that and it will take you directly to the application information screen. Yep, I told you it was simple. Over the course of your Nexus 7's life, you may modify the behaviour of your application preferences. You can do this by going to Settings and then choosing the Applications option. All your apps are listed here and you can individually tinker with the app preferences. By that, I mean default applications to launch files, disabling notifications and even disabling applications completely. These are all done through the Application Info screen that you can see here. But if you want a clean start and need to quickly reset every application back to its default behaviour, then you can use this option in the top right hand corner of the screen. Using this option will reset all the preferences for disabled apps, disabled apps notifications, default applications for actions and background data restrictions for applications. It doesn't however delete any application data, so you're pretty safe to use it if you need to use it. Things you might expect to need to do if you do use this option is choose once again which application you want to run books, films, music and so on.
Every time you install an application from the Google Play Market Store, it will fill your home screen with another shortcut icon to that application. You'll soon find that your screen is full of applications. With one space left on the screen, let me demonstrate how this works. I will download the BBC Weather application from the Google Play Market Store. And after it's been installed on my Nexus 7, it will appear on the home screen automatically. Just like this. Want to stop it doing that? Here's how. In the top right hand corner of the Google Play screen, you will find three dots. Choose the settings option and you will be taken to the following screen that has an option called auto add widgets. If you uncheck this box, then the next time you install an application, it will not add a shortcut to the home screen. So in this example, I will reinstall the BBC Weather application and as you can see, nothing is going to appear in that space. This means that you can go to the application drawer and place the applications you want on your home screen rather than the Nexus 7 chucking loads of icons all across your home screens. If your Nexus 7 is a popular device in the household, the chances are you have multiple accounts for different users. You will know that when you first press the power button to unlock the tablet, you can switch users via the profile pictures at the bottom of the screen, as demonstrated here. But what if you're already using the device and you want to switch user without having to first lock the tablet? Can you do that? Well, of course you can. So if you're already using the device, swipe down from the top right portion of the screen to bring up the settings. Your profile picture will be there. Press on that profile picture and that will quickly lock the tablet and bring you back to the lock screen where you can choose a new profile. Just remember that if you do do this, if you have any security such as pattern lock and face lock or pin numbers, you will have to type them in again to access your Nexus 7 for the user that you choose. In times gone by, the popular thing to do was to replace the keyboard that comes with your Android device so you can customise it to your preferences. However, the built-in Nexus 7 keyboard has improved significantly during the last round of updates and now you can tweak it to do stuff like this, adding a number row along the top, essentially turning it into a PC keyboard. Now, there are a few steps to do this, so watch and follow closely. The first thing you will need to do is go to the settings screen and then scroll down to an option that says language and input. Press on that to enter the screen. In this list of keyboard and input methods, press on the Android keyboard options. Next, choose advanced settings at the bottom of that screen and then on advanced settings, choose custom input styles. Now on this screen, there is an option in the top right hand corner called add styles. Press on that. Choose language English or your preferred language and the layout must be PC. Once you've completed this, you will see that a new style has been added to the screen. In this example, it's English UK PC. Now from this screen, you need to back out twice so that you end up on the Android keyboard settings screen. At the top of this screen is an option called input languages. Press on that. Now on this screen, use system language will be checked. Uncheck it and that will give you the option to select other active input methods. In my example, I'm going to use English UK and English UK PC. And that's what you need to do for your settings. When you've done that, you can clear off settings and then go into a screen and use the keyboard. Now when you use a keyboard, you'll see a small icon that looks like a globe. And if you press that, it will switch between your active input methods. So in this case, I'm switching between my English keyboard and my English PC keyboard, which as you can see, has numbers at the top to reflect that it's a PC keyboard. And that is how you get a customization of your Nexus 7 keyboard. Here's an interesting performance tweak for the Nexus 7. A task killer can close all the applications currently running to free up RAM and improve the short term performance. Usually you have to do this manually, but this tweak performs the task automatically every single time you unlock your device. To do this, you will need to download a free application called CleanMaster. For more general information on this app, please watch my video review. 
For this specific tweak, all you need to do is open up the app and press the Options button in the top right-hand corner of the screen and then select Settings. Go to the Task Killer section and there will be a toggle option called Auto Kill. Turn that on and the frequency will automatically be set to Screen Off. So now, every time you lock your device and then unlock it, a clean sweep of tasks will be run, which should give you a slight performance improvement. The potential trade-off of this tweak is that if you're in the middle of something, such as playing a game or writing a document, and you lock the device and then unlock it, it may close all the tasks you are running, and you may lose progress. So consider this trial and error. Give it a try and see if it works for you. Here's how to toggle on or off your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth directly from the home screen. If you swipe down from the top right of the home screen, some quick settings will be displayed. If you tap on the Wi-Fi button, you will be taken to the Wi-Fi screen where you can turn it on or off. But I'm not here to tell you how to do that. I'm here to tell you that if you long press on either of these two options from the home screen, you can actually turn them on or off. And I can go into the Bluetooth screen, but why bother doing that when all I have to do is long press on a button to activate it, just like this. So in summary, to save yourself a few precious seconds, when you're on any home screen, swipe down from the top right hand corner of the screen and long press those two options to quickly turn them on and off. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you're hungry for more videos, subscribe. It's free after all.